Hi, my name is Rebecca Crosswhite, one of the Rebeccas here at Rediscover Books. Um, and I am here today to talk to you about our Read Freely project. It is a project that you can help put really diverse viewpoints into other people's hands and you can support that in so many ways. And I want to tell you about some of the books and why we chose them. This is Ghost Boys. It is by Jewel Parker Rhodes. And if you've never read her, I highly recommend it. She's amazing. And this book in particular is really fantastic. You know, I read this a couple years ago, um, and it's it's really intense. It, it really is intense. And I was like, how am I gonna sell this book? And then everything that happened last year came through and I found a way to talk about it. This is the story of a boy who is killed by a police officer. Um, and in being killed with a police officer, he, he becomes a ghost and he meets all the other ghost boys who have also been killed by police officers throughout our country's history. Um, so it's told from his point of view, and it is also told from the point of view of the daughter of the police officer who shot him. Um, so it is both stories told in a amazing age appropriate way that really just gets you another view into why we need to fix this country and how we can go about that and the mistakes that we don't want to make anymore. Um, it's, it's amazing. So this is The Magic Fish by Trung Lee Lin. Um, it is the uh, story of a Vietnamese um, boy who is second generation. Um, and it's the story that about how he has come in and assimilated so much that he actually doesn't speak the same language as his parents and grandparents. So he speaks English and they speak Vietnamese and English, um, but he doesn't have that ability to communicate with his grandparents um, because he just has never learned the Vietnamese. And the way that his mom and him are connecting right now are through the Vietnamese fairy tales. And this is a graphic novel, so the fairy tales are interwoven into the story and it helps tell his story too. It's also a coming of age story. Um, he is learning whom he loves and he is not sure if that is an acceptable thing in his school, in his church, in his um, community. Uh, and so we learn um, how he moves through his life and how he shares these things with his family and how he makes those connections. So every person at the store asked me for like two weeks, have you read Fire Keeper's Daughter yet? And I had to say, no, not yet. It's on my staff. Well, I finally read Fire Keeper's Daughter and oh my goodness, there is a reason that they would not stop talking about it. It is fantastic. It is the story. It is the story of a a girl who is coming into her own. She's part Ojibwe, part white. Um, it is the story of her learning um, from her auntie, and it's the story from her learning from her mom, and it's the story from her um, just learning from the people around her. Um, it is also part murder mystery. It is the story um, of, it's got Canadian, it's got US, uh, it's got a little FBI in there. It is just a great it is a it is a murder mystery but at the same time you, i learned so much that i did not know in this book and it was it gives you lots of language um that you had not heard before it was just all the way around like my my co-workers were right you need to read this so this is the first rule of punk by celia c perez it is the story of a girl whose parents are divorced now. Um, her mom has moved them to Chicago and her dad lives a thousand miles away. Um, and it is her story of finding out who she is, learning about her culture, pushing back against her culture. Her mom is what she calls super Mexican um, and wants her to be all things Mexican. And Celia is more, uh, pushes more towards that punk feeling and, and that finding that balance between punk and Mexican is like kind of her story along with you get to learn what zines are. She does lots of zines. She starts a band. It is just a fantastic story of a girl who's trying to figure out who she is, trying to figure out how to live in this new world where her parents are not together and she doesn't get to do the same thing she used to every day. And um, you get to learn about all kinds of really cool punk bands. So this is I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter, and it is by Erica L. Sanchez. This is the story about Julia, and she is not your perfect Mexican daughter. That was her sister Olga's job. Um, and Olga is, um, she dies. It's very early on, it happens in the first chapter. Um, and so this family is now in shambles. They really don't know what 
to do now that Olga is gone. Um, her mom has all kinds of pressures on her to be that perfect Mexican dollar. She, she's the first generation um, here in the United States. And she just is, it is a coming of age story where she is learning how to fit into her culture, how to fit into the culture that she's living in now, um, and how to make herself happy and hopefully, you know, have that support of the family around her. Um, it's also kind of like a mystery because you start to learn that Olga was not really the perfect Mexican daughter. And she kind of discovers who she, her sister was. All right, so new kid, Jerry Craft. This is another graphic novel. This is about a boy who gets into a prestigious new school. Um, and he is like one of three black kids in this school. And he, it is his experience in this almost all white school um, along with the fact that it's his experience with his parents. His parents have really high expectations of him. Um, even the other kids in his school have really high expectations of him. Because he's black, he's expected to be this great sports player and it's not his thing. He is like on third string soccer team. Um, and he's just not, sports are not his thing, but art is. And so you see the story of him going through this new school and it's also told through his own artwork, the, his graphic novels that he draws. Um, but it hits on some really important things like none of the teachers can tell them apart and like how that feels when that's happening to you. And oh, it is, it is, there's a reason it won the Newberry. So you're gonna notice we actually have two books by Jason Reynolds on our Read Freely list. And that is because he's amazing. Um, he just has a, the best voice right now for the world. I think everybody should read him. He's got lots of stuff out there. But this book is one that he did with Ibram Kendi, and it is the young adult version of Stamped. Stamped is a huge book. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's huge. This is a book that Jason Reynolds has taken Stamped and made it a narrative, made it um, a book that you can sit down and read, and it's, it is more, um, intended for a younger audience, uh, but it is the story of Stamp. It is what you have been told in history is not always correct, and you should be asking questions. And this really gives you a guideline of how to ask those questions, how to challenge, you know, the, the history that is being taught. And really just like, I was blown away by like how many things I was like, are you kidding? They've never taught me that in school. And that is like this whole book, like this whole book is, they never taught me that in school, like is the whole idea behind it. Um, but it is written in such a way that it is entertaining and relatable and amazing. All right, this is Front Desk. It is by Kelly Yang. Um, it is a part of, so far, a trilogy. Um, I can't remember if she said she's gonna do more, but so far it's gonna be a trilogy. It is the story of Mia. She's an immigrant family and they help run a motel. They're not the owners of it, but they help, they clean it. She helps work, work the front desk. This takes place in the early 90s, so it kind of spoke to my soul a little bit. Um, and it's really just the the different um, feelings that people have about people who are immigrating to the United States. Um, the family is also helping uh, immigrants kind of under the, you know, owner's nose, like helping immigrants as they come to the country. Uh, it's got humor in it. It tells the story of Mia. It's and how she wants to become a writer and how she's planning on doing that. It's just a really sweet, funny story that kind of gives you a view of what it's like to be an immigrant in the United States. United States. This is the story um, that we hear a lot right now. It's the, he was in a grocery store, they thought he was stealing, and so he, um, a, a police officer is very brutal with him. Um, and it's, He's out of school for a while and everybody knows that he's been hurt by this police officer. And it's the back and forth of like, you know, was he stealing? Was he not stealing? Does it matter if he was stealing? But at the same time, there's a child, there's a kid um, who saw it and he is trying to get his voice and help um, clear up what happened and, and just kind of put us into a better place so that this doesn't keep happening. All right, this next one is called Parable of the Sower. It has been around for a little bit. Um, but we thought it was a good time to reintroduce it. Um, it's Octavia Butler, who is a fantastic science fiction writer. And this story, you know, you have to be really brave to pick it up right now because it really hits super close to home what's happening in our world. It's got a lot of different climate change things that are happening. 
you know, California's running out of water, there's lots of fires, um, you know, the people with privilege are the ones that are, that are doing okay, but everyone else is kind of like losing their place. And it really tells the story of a world that's kind of feels close to what we're doing right now and, and addresses, you know, how to have empathy for people and how to put ourselves in their shoes and, and what to do the best that we can help people with. Like we, what personally we can do to help people. Um, so it is science fiction, but it's like one of those ones that's like really close to really real life right now. So um, it's pretty crazy. So those are the amazing books that we picked. And um, you can see why we put, picked them. They all have really amazing viewpoints. They really have different points of view to, to see the world from. They help you build empathy. That is what books do. They help you build empathy. And they are all part of this Read Freely project. So how do you do the Read Freely project? You can register online to be one of the people to hand out 10 books. So all you need to do is fill out the form. The only thing we really ask is if you are awarded these 10 books to hand out is that you actually take them and hand them to a person. Give them physically to another person so that you have that human contact. Another way that you can help is you can donate money so that we can buy even more books to hand out to people. Um, that would help us put more books in more people's hands. Another way you can help is share this. Share this idea. Help us get books in people's hands. Help us build empathy and make this world an amazing place.